Hi, I'm Eva from a mom in her car .com and on Instagram at a mom in her car. And this is my ninth floss tube. Welcome to my channel. Um, if you're new or returning, I'm happy you're here. I'm excited to talk about my stitching with you and I want to learn about your stitching. So be sure in the comments if I haven't followed you on Instagram yet or if you have a floss to mention that and I'd love to come over and take a look at your stitching as well. Um, I'm filming on Saturday instead of Sunday this week. This coming up is my kids uh, spring break. So we're taking a few days off. We're not going anywhere because of the situation that we're in. Uh, but we're still going to take a few days off and try to find some fun things to do. And so I just wanted tomorrow to be completely free for my family. So I figured I would talk about some cross stitching today. I did get some stitching done this week. I continued my March Madness plans. Um, uh, um, I'm having a ton of fun with March Madness. I did, I have struggled a little bit to figure out like, oh, which project am I doing today? I usually stick with one for at least three or four days. Um, but that's been the fun part is to have something new to stitch on, um, each day of the week. So in today's video, I'm going to go through some of the whips that I've been working on my one new start, but all of that is part of March Madness. I'll tell you about my plans coming up for the next week. Um, I did get some haul. Um, one interesting thing that I want to cover with you all and get some advice on. And then, um, we, I, there was a giveaway from last week, so we'll cover that last. One thing before I get too far into my stitching, I did want to update you. In my last video, I showed you these beautiful um, magnifier glasses that I've been using. So I've been using them for a week now. Um, they have different, these pieces of glass are interchangeable, so it pops out, and there's different ones. I'm using the three, two and a half. That seems to be what I need. There is a light on the top that gets really bright and it's adjustable. These were like, I think between 15 and $20 on Amazon. I got this idea from Country Stitchers. Um, and when I showed these last week, I think I had been using them for about 24 hours. Well, now I've been using them a week and I still love them. Um, I stitch on the go a lot. So whether that means, you know, upstairs while my kids are playing video games or on the couch or in here or in the car when we're driving somewhere um, at the doctor's office. And so these are really handy because I do move around so much. I don't just have one stitching spot. Um, at first I thought like I will never wear these in public. I think I even said that in my last video because I mean, come on. Um, you can see why maybe I wouldn't wear them in public, but frankly, I've kind of been just, I have been putting them on. <laughs> The thing I like about them, um, if you've been watching my videos for the last several, you know that I'm trying 40 count, which I'm new to. I'm fairly new to cross stitching. I'm a, I've only been stitching about a year and a half or so. And so when I started 40 count, I was struggling. And so one of the things I realized is I need really good lighting and good magnification. And this has, you know, really made the difference. So all that to say, I'm still happy with them. Um, I'm assuming I will drop them and break them at some point, but they are much cheaper the, than the $100 plus floor lamps that I was looking at. If I had a stitchy spot where I did most of my stitching, I would definitely order a floor magnifying lamp, um, but I don't, so I move around. So those are a good solution for me. So I just wanted to give you an update. I still like them. Um, so if you look in the market for some magnification glasses, those have worked well for me. Okay, on with the stitching. So I have eight whips. I'm still working to build up my whip stash, but it's growing and I have every single whip I have I love right now. Because of March Madness, I got to work on five of my whips this week um, and I had one new start. So let me walk you through my March Madness. Um, I talked about round one and round two last week. March Madness is a fun stitchy thing with Still City Stitchers. I'll flash their name here at the bottom so you can find them on YouTube. I mean, they will explain what it is. Um, I am on, I did round three and four this week, and we're going to talk about round five. I believe I'm looking at my notes over here. Um, I have really liked March Madness. I would not want to stitch like this every um, month because I don't think I would get anything done, but I think I will participate in March Madness again. It was a fun way to get all my whips in rotation. And it really, you know, if I'm only working on one whip, like on a random Tuesday night after work, I don't get a ton of progress done, 
but it does make me realize what's in my stash and what, and it helps me set goals. So for everyone I've gone through this week, I've been like, Oh, I kind of want to finish this by then. Or no, I don't have a goal for this one. I'm glad I put a few threads in it, but I'm ready to move on. So all that to say, I'm glad March Madness is only a month, but I will participate in it again. And I liked how it's structured and I liked how um, I was able to set it up this year. So the first thing I did for round three is my um, fruits of my modern folk embroidery. Now I did do a quick iron on these for you. So you should feel very special because I don't iron for just anyone. And so I just have them sitting here um, so that they don't get too wrinkly. Um, I'm not gonna win any awards for the ironing I did um, if there are ironing awards, but I did run a quick iron over them. So first up in round three for me is Modern Folk Embroidery. I did this every time. Fruits of Plenty. Um, this is Jacob's 2021 um, Stitch Along where he releases one a month. I think this was like January, February, March. I started with March because I like to start from right to left. So I will show you my progress here. Um, I'm using DMC 932 and 3750. These are Jacob's colors that he's using as well. Um, I did try to find some silks or over dyes that I liked, but honestly, I really like how the blues are turning out. Um, so this is the top right corner. I did get a question on Instagram when I posted this or some of my progress, which was, is this an easy stitch? Um, and I'm a new stitcher, so keep that in mind. And I'm really new to 40 count. So this is on 40 count platinum, by the way. Um, so, uh, I don't know if it's an easy stitch. I haven't stitched it long enough. So I will report back after I'm done with March to let you know if I think it's an easy stitch. When I started this piece right here, it was, this was super easy and very relaxing and I didn't want to put it down. Then when I started the octagon, I did have to frog a few times. Because, the, I mean, that's a lot to count there. I mean, these are like 31, 33 stitches. And so that's a lot to count. And I was doing this in the evening when I was tired and I was watching a movie. And so maybe it's a little tricky to count all those, or maybe I was just tired. And so I don't want to make a judgment call. But I will tell you this, as soon as I, I mean, just having this out, I don't want to put it away. And I have this idea of doing several of Jacob's modern folk embroidery designs in the same color and like making a wall of these. I don't know, like some people have a red sampler wall. I kind of want to do a blue modern folk embroidery wall. So um, I have really loved this one. So there we are on modern folk embroidery. Uh, like I said, I am just using the DMC. They are beautiful. I know better than to um, second guess a designer. So I did put my DMC. I usually put these on bob DMC on bobbins, but since I was just using two skeins and I have six skeins of each color. I just put a couple on these floss bitties that um, Fat Quarter Shop makes um, that I got in the Stitch Quarterly, my last Stitch Quarterly that I participated in. So very pretty DMC colors. I'm very, very happy with this stitch. Okay, the battle in round three was for that stitch and Mistletoe Lane. So Mistletoe Lane is um, was a stitch along from Fat Quarter Shop, I think like last summer. This cute little house, this reminds me of, you know, sort of Christmas cartoons and that sort of thing. I am stitching this one on 25 count Pewter Lugana, over two, two over two. I am using the Call for DMC, which I'll show you in just a minute. When I started this this week, I was just on the very edge of this green. So I already had the pink and red banner. I was on the beginning of the green uh, board, whatever this is, this green <laughs> border, and I made it all the way to the end. So now next I will go fill in. There's a lighter color green here and a little red, and then there's a stocking that hangs from there. So I was okay with my progress. Um, I don't know why this garland, is that what it is? Green garland. I don't know why this green garland is taking me so long. I've had to frog several times. It's not hard. The chart is super easy to read. As a matter of fact, if you are a new cross stitcher, any of the It's so Emma Fat Quarter Shop 
designs are really beginner friendly. And if you're interested in trying, if you like taking a step from Ada to 40 count, this 25 count I stitch over to, so it's, it mimics 40 count, but the holes are nice and big. It's easy to see. I don't need magnification for that. So there are the call for DMCs on this one. So it's a good beginner one. And plus it's just a fun, just a fun, cute stitch as are a lot of fat quarter shop um, stitches. I am about, <laughs> I put 23% done on this little lane because it didn't feel like I made a lot of progress and I was at 20% last time, um, but I was more than 20%. So there you go, 23%. Progress. That's what I mean. I think I worked on this one on a random Tuesday. I'm tired on Tuesday nights. I usually get a little stitching done, but not a ton. So I um, put a poll on Instagram, like a lot of people are doing with um, March Madness. And I said, which should move forward? May piece, uh, um, mistletoe lane or modern folk, em folk embroidery and modern, modern folk embroidery one. So I will be stitching on that again on the 15th which is coming up in a few days. So it was able to move forward. It will be in one of the other rounds. So that's fun and exciting. So my round four, the first uh, stitch I did for round four is my May Peace and Health sampler. This is by Milady's Needle, Gloria Milady's Needle. This was a sal that my local needle workshop, the Stitch Niche did a few years ago um, when I was brand, 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 brand new. This is the first time that I stitched on linen um, I am using the call for DMCs and again, I ironed it for you. So I put it back here. This is Weeks Dye Works parchment. Um, this, sometimes I hear floss tubers talk about the old Weeks linen. And I think this is the old Weeks linen because it's a lot lo looser than my other um, linen is even from weeks. And so this might be the old, I mean, I like it fine, but it is different than the other linen that I stitch on. I'm using the call for DMC. Um, they're very, 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 very pretty. So where, oh, let me tell you, I'll tell you something about this one in a minute. So where I got to was I finished this lion. I finished this half of that little flower design here. And then I started this butterfly, which will mimic this little butterfly or bug or whatever it is there. So I didn't get too far. I just got a few little motifs basically. But again, this was like a Wednesday night stitching. So also, let's see if I can show you this. As I was doing this, I noticed an error. In this little motif, you see this one right here is lower than the mirror on the other side, than the mirror image here. So this is lower on this side than that. I don't know which one's right and which one's wrong. So I don't know what to do about it. I just left it for now because again, this was my very first, this is really my very first sampler, very first time working on linen. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot of errors in it. You know, like it took me 14 tries to get that little lion in. So I might leave it because sometimes samplers have errors in them and that's how you know they're authentic. So maybe one day when people are auctioning this off, they'll know it's authentic because <laughs> there's a mistake. I'm sure that won't happen. But also it might get to me and I may have to go and frog it and move it down. Um, I don't think it's affected anything else yet because these lines are still on the same row. Maybe it affected this bug, but I'm not real worried about that. I don't think it'll affect it enough that I'll notice it. So when I have more patience, I think I'll come back and fix this. I was kind of thinking, I don't really have a goal for this piece. I have myself at 35% done. I'm on page two, basically. So this was a full page finish, like up to here. And this is page two. Um, I don't really have a goal, but part of me started thinking maybe I'll make September. I've heard like September can be sampler September. Maybe I'll make this a focus piece for September and try to just at least put a good dent in it. And if that's the case, oh, see, I can't stop looking at this. It's just catching my eye. So I'm going to either have to make an intentional decision to leave it as an error so that it is an authentic sampler, or I'm going to have to pluck it and start again which that little motif won't take me that long. So that's where I am on May Peace and Health. That's 32 count 
Weeks Dye Works, Parchment, and the Call for DMCs. That was the first stitch for round four, and then I got to have a new start. So I have been eyeballing this. I think I ordered this one from Fat Quarter Shop. I think I saw this on Jen from Quirks and Stitches, and I've seen it in several different places. Oh, and I saw it on Fat Quarter Shop's floss tube. I think Cheryl is stitching it, and she's a pro stitcher. So Seeking Refuge um, by the Scarlet House. Um, I am using the Call For. It's a combination of Classic Color Works, Weeks Dye Works, and Gentle Arts. I have had to replace a few of them with the DMC. So here are my threads. Um, I couldn't find Juniper anywhere. I finally found it, and it's in my haul today. I ordered it. And then one other one I couldn't find, so I replaced it with the DMC. can't remember what it was. When I get to it, I will remember. Um, so I have DMC for that one. Now, let me show you. I am stitching this on the call for 40 count vintage country mocha. So this is what the model was stitched on. But the model used DMC 310 for that black border down there. And I could not decide what to do. So let me show you again. This black border is DMC 310. So it's nice and bright and black. But when I went to my stash, I did have plenty of DMC 310. But I also, for some reason, had several skeins of black Classic Color Works black coffee. And so I put this on Instagram and I said, I'm torn. Should I use the black coffee? Should I use the 310? Because I could see why you'd use the 310. You want this nice black full coverage. It really stands out, especially next to the green that's on top, which is Weeks Dye Works broom tree so let me just show you these together here is broom tree next to that black so i could see how that 310 would really make that pop out but people on instagram um either said just yes use if you have enough black coffee by classic color works use that some people said don't use it unless you're going to do one x at a time well, I already stitch one X at a time. I go from the bottom right to the top left and I do one X at a time. I do usually in columns. So I get the variegation, so that's good. And someone else said, um, only do it if you have enough skeins because of the dye lot, I guess. I'm making assumptions there. And I did add four just random skeins that I don't have kitted. I I don't know why, maybe they came in kits and I've just been really judicious with them. So I went ahead and did the um, classic color works and I'm pretty happy with it. Um, so I see the variegation. I like how this looks together. So I'll be honest with you. I probably would have liked it either way. <laughs> so, you know, if you're on the fence, flip a coin and that will save you some angst. Um, but I'm happy with the choice that I made on it. I'm um, in this is a fun stitch. So I like um, coverage like that. I like doing that. That's very meditative to me. And I think those flowers are cute. So this has been a really good one for me. Um, okay, so here's the thing. Instead of doing a pulse, so that was round four. It was my, my peace and health, and it was my, um, that one, Seeking Refuge um, sampler. So instead of doing a poll, I'm actually going to do a drawing for myself right here with you. You'll keep me honest. Here's my peace and health. I'm going to put them in a little teacup, and the, then I'm going to call the winner. Just something different. Um, saves me the time of having to put them in. Oh, by the way, that was Seeking Refuge. I don't know if you can do that. Put the poll up on Instagram. I'm going to shake it. And whoever I pull out is going to be the winner. And it is May Peace and Health. So my May Peace and Health moves on. I'll put Seeking Refuge away until at least next month. Um, and then that is the winner. All right, so let's see what is next. So round five, I did start round five today. By the way, I'm drinking water out of a wine glass. I don't know why I'm doing that. I'm not drinking wine here on Plus Two with you. I'm not against that, but this is water. So for round five, the first one I did um, is Celebrate Spring by Madame Chantilly. 
Um, this is a stitch along with Georgia Girl Stitcher Stitching. I don't know. I'll put her name down here. And Evelyn Across the Pond. It's a very casual stitch along. They're not even doing spring. I think they're doing winter. It's just, um, and I'll put the hashtag at the bottom as well. I think it's Celebrate Chantilly Sal. There's Madame Chantilly is the designer. And it's just stitch whatever Madame Chantilly you want, whenever you want, which I like that kind of, um, I like those kind of rules. So um, I started this sometime this month, I think the first weekend of March, and then put it away for some um, March Madness. But now I worked on it today, and I got that full tray filled in. So I'm done with the tray. I know it looks strange. I was kind of, I really thought it would just be like, oh, fill all this in to the different trays. But it's not because these little cute creatures are sitting on it. I should have left the pattern out. These little creatures are sitting on the tray, and so they cover See how that you can't see the tray there because the little thing is covering it and the same here. And so that's why there's like holes in my tray, but um, the tray itself is done, which is fun because now I get to start filling in some of the little creatures. Um, I am stitching this on 40 count flax. I am using the call for DMC colors. They're very, very, very pretty very springy. That's why I chose to do spring instead of winter, the spring tra uh, tray instead of the winter tray, because I was ready to have some spring in my life. So if you see, I mean, you can just see the bunny rabbits and the girl in her dress and the flowers that are going to come out. Um, and it's going to be really, really pretty. So I'm excited about this one. Um, my goal for this, I do want to finish this in 2021. If this does move forward, I want to get at least one full tray of creatures and critters completed. I don't think I would be able to complete this in March if it gets finished. It is a big stitch. Um, so give yourself some time if you do commit to doing this. But so far, it's fun. Easy to read chart. Um, the colors are so pretty. It's very motivating. The creatures are cute. Um, so it's a little sophisticated, a little fun everything you need in a stitch. Um, so I'm really liking that one. I think I'm at about 30% complete on that one. Uh, so not too bad. That one's moving along. Um, honestly, a little faster than I thought it would. Um, the next one in this round, I have not started yet. It will be tomorrow, but it is my winter rose manor. So I'm going to do another drawing for this to see which one wins, but either way I work on this tomorrow. And so let me show it to you really fast. Um, this one's all over Instagram. Um, Lori Holt finished this. Several others are now blanking. But this is Winter Rose Manor um, by Brenda Gervais. Um, I ordered this from Fire Poppies. They did, it's basically the call for colors, um, the over dyes, but they did a conversion for me on a few because... Um, the, it's hard to find floss in all the exact colors. So I really appreciated that. And then the house, I wanted to be more pinky than peachy. And so I wanted Weeks Dye Works Meredith's Pink. And I got a very variegated color of Meredith's Pink there. So that's nice and pretty. And let me show you. I talked about this one a lot last week. Um, the border. Oh, also, I am stitching this on 40 Cat Winters Brew. And it smells so good. It smells like coffee. So if you like the smell of coffee, get you some winter's brew. Um, anyhow, I told you last week how I did finish the border. Um, but it didn't match up exactly. It's off by about a stitch. Um, and I think I'm just going to leave it. So that is my winter rose manor. Uh, so once I get started tomorrow, I'll start at the bottom right and just start stitching. I'm not going to do the flowers that are in the border until the end, just in case I do end up having to frog that border because it is off one. I don't think it'll affect things. If not, the very last thing I do on this project will be the flowers. If it is a problem, I'll just pluck that green out and then I won't at least have wasted the flowers too. So that's my plan with Winter Rose Manor. So I'll stitch on that. My plan, I'm looking down at my notes here. So my plan is to stitch on that one for just one day tomorrow, except now it is time to do my next drawing. So instead of doing a poll on Instagram, 
I'm kind of going to pre-fight this battle. I promise I won't cheat. I will finish a little more on Celebrate Spring tonight and then do Winter Rose Manor and put nice good heart into it. So here is my Celebrate Spring. It's going into the cup and Winter Rose. And here's the thing. The fun thing is I don't care which of these win because I love them both so much. I, I'm, I would be happy to pick either one up whenever it's time to do that again for the month and celebrate spring one. So there we go. So that one will move forward. Um, I'll still work on Winter Rose Manor tomorrow, like I mentioned. So here's my plan. I'm going to flash my bracket up here again um, and take a little sip of water. So tomorrow is Winter Rose Manor. Then on the 15th, because my modern folk embroidery stitch along um, won its battle, it gets I get another day. That's on the 15th. The 16th then will be May Peace and Health. So another day on that, which is good because I need to make some progress on that one. And then these, then I'll do a, another battle. <laughs> And then the 17th will be Celebrate Spring. And then the 18th will be the winner of one of those battles. Anyways, it's hard for me to keep track of. And then we'll see which one goes next. Um, but I'm almost down to the final four. And I'll post that on Instagram when I make it there. Then I will also, and I think I'll go ahead and talk about this now. This is part of my haul, but I'll go ahead and talk about it. The last week in March, I will also dedicate several full, yeah, I mean, lots of stitching time to the um, April sampler of the month. This is the Country Cottage Needlework series. I'm stitching these on 32 count, beautiful beige, which helped. Um, it was a club from Fat Quarter Shop. Pretty sure they're sold out of them, but you can get these patterns a lot of places. Um, I've already done the cottages of the month. I showed those in my last video, all completely done, all 12. Um, so now this year I'm gonna complete these and frame them similar to this. This one's super cute. I know it's hard to see on the camera, but it has bunnies and chicks. It's so cute. I love it. Um, these take me usually a good weekend day and two or three evening nights. So not too long, um, but they do take some dedication. I can't jump around on them. I've just got to jump in and do them. And so that is my... Um, first thing I've got to do the last week of March. So there's that. My other stitch along, which I'm keeping up, I've been dedicated to keeping up with, is the Spooky Hollow series. Um, and I'm on the candy shop. So he's, uh, he, I don't know why, I think the, hand, the candy shop is a boy, but this one's super cute. Love the purple, love the variegation. Um, these do, these take me longer than the sampler of the month. They're fairly big scenes, but I'm pretty dedicated to them. I use, I'm using 18 count hazy gray fabric flare. So I'll spend a few days of dedicated days at the end of March stitching this as well. So in addition to whichever of my um, pieces wins March Madness and makes it to the final round and I'll keep dedicated time to that. I also need to get finished my April sampler of the month and my spooky hollow library. So those are sort of my upcoming plans for the actually the next two weeks. Altogether, I have 12 starts in 2021. I have eight whips that I'm working on. I finished seven. I have two things kitted, but I'm about to tell you about something else I am about to kit up. So let me talk about um, the rest of my haul. So part of it was these two charts I just showed you. Then I also, like I said, for my Seeking Refuge sampler, I had a hard time finding Juniper. So I went to Fat Quarter Shop and ordered apparently two skeins of that. I don't remember ordering two, but I'm fine with it. And then the 3051, I can't remember what this is for, but it's something in Seeking Refuge. Um, I couldn't find, oh, Green with Envy. That's what it was. Um, yes, Green with Envy, I think. I couldn't find it anywhere. So I just ordered the DMC replacement of that. And then, as you all know, who's been watching a few videos in my last giveaway, I ordered some more Sullivan's Easy Guide Ball Tip. I had a, um, so I usually don't, I mean, if I'm gonna order and pay shipping, I usually order more. 
but I had a $20 gift card um, from something from leftover from Christmas, like a Visa gift card. And I was like, I'm going to order only enough that the $20 gift card covers what's in here and the shipping because I am on a budget with my stitching and I don't want to get too carried away. So there was that haul. The other thing I want to mention, so there's a chart that I've fallen in love with for the last several months. And I've been hesitant because it's a huge chart. It's Consider the Lilies um, by Heartstring Sampler. And I'm going to put the chart up here because I did order the PDF. I am started using Pattern Keeper a little bit. I prefer the paper patterns. I don't know why. They're just, I think it's the whole I'm on the go thing. And so I can just pull my bag. It has the chart and it has everything I need. But I've been trying Pattern Keeper. I do keep my tablet with me most of the time. It's a little bit of a hassle if I'm just running an errand or something real fast, but it's fine. Um, and I could use my phone too, because they're synced together. Um, but anyhow, all that to say, I ordered the PDF of Considering the Lilies a few months ago. And then I just kept going back and forth. Like, what am I going to stitch this on? What um, floss am I going to use? And then my last video, I talked about like DMC versus overdyes versus silks. And so I finally just, you all know what this means. I ordered from Fire Poppies, one of my favorite shops to order from. I ordered a couple of things to kit it up with. And so here's what I have. And then I'll tell you what I think my plans are. And I'm going to have to look at the papers that they put in this. So first I ordered... This is kind of crazy for me. Remember or how earlier in the video I said I just started 40 count? I ordered cream 56 count linen. 56 count. But I saw Nicole from Nicole's Needlework. She recently just stitched on a piece of 56 count. And she said she could. it was not any worse or better than 45 count. And I've done really good on 40 count. I ordered some 45 for a Hands Across the Sea um, sampler, which I'll tell you about in just a minute. Um, so I went for the 56. And here's my thinking on this. The Consider the Lily stitch is huge. I can't remember what the stitches are, but this is 56 count. And this piece is just big enough for it. And two and a half or three inch board. I can't remember. Like that's big. Imagine that what the piece would look like. Well, some of you have probably stitched it on 40 counter 36 or I think the call for is 36. So I want it to be a little more manageable in size because I don't know where I'm going to put it. And I, I try not to start something unless I kind of have an idea what I'm going to do with it. And so this one, I'm kind of thinking my bedroom, but I also am thinking about this over years like years and years. This is one of those, what do they call them? BAP, big A projects. <laughs> I don't know. I can't keep all the acronyms straight. So this is fabric choice number one. And honestly, I think this is what I'm going to go with, but this is fabric choice number two. This one is 28 count winter moon. Um, let me show you this. And the idea on the 28 count, I saw somebody on Instagram. I've got to start writing this stuff down. One over one on 28 count. So this feels a lot like the 25 count pewter Lugana that I'm using for mistletoe lane that I showed earlier. So the colors of these two are very similar. The size, I'm just curious now, if someone hold these up together, if they would be the same, because wouldn't like 28 times two, wouldn't that be 56? Shouldn't they be the same? Yeah, I mean, they're almost exactly the same. My 28 count is just slightly longer here on the edge. That's about it. Oh, and on the bottom. Um, So either over one 28 count or I'm gonna try 56 count. Now look, I have these. They have a light. I also can go up on my magnification. I have my needles that I love. So I may try it. Anyhow, that's the, the thread. Now let's talk about the floss. Now this was insane. This was another gift card I used. Also, as you all know, why I love the store. And in, in addition to the two days, I mean, I got this in two days. Um, 
I'm pretty sure my order was over there 45 minimum, so I had free shipping. And I got my Charleston chew, which I've been saving for a special occasion. So I'm going to leave it here on my desk. I just, I can't even believe this. These are the threads for this thing. That's a lot of floss. So I ended up ordering the called for with a few DMC substitutions where I just couldn't find it. Um, I just couldn't find the color. There were a lot of the gentle arts that were missing. Not a lot, but you know, just these few here. But my thinking on this was, um, I'm going to flash the chart back up here. So each of those little motifs, they don't take a ton of thread. So I'm kind of thinking I'll have a lot of thread left over and this will help build my stash, which is one of the things I'm trying to do. So here is my plan for this chart. My thinking is that in April, I will try to get the green border as much done as possible. My goal would be in April to really get it kind of done, like the, the green, just the green, you know, fine done. And then in May for mania. So for, I don't know if you know about mania, but it's a group of folks started a Facebook group and I don't know how long ago, way before I started cross stitching and in mania, you do whatever you want, but the idea is to stitch more and do a lot of stitching. And so some people start a new project every day in May. I can never be that person. Um, some people start a new project every week, you know, it's just whatever you want to do. Um, so I heard someone, I think it was the contented stitcher, but I might be making that up. They talked about doing consider the lilies and just taking one of the motifs a day and working on it. And then you would make a lot of progress if you just did one motif a day. So what I thought I would do with this one is the flowers take one flower a day in May. So I would already have the green border done. I'll flash the chart up here again. I'll already have this green border done. And then each day in May, I could work on one flower. And then Jen from Corks and Stitches works on this one on Sunday. And so I could pull it out on Sundays too, which would make that go even faster. And if I happen to get through all the flowers, then I could do one motif a day. And I'll just really focus on this in May. And maybe I only pull this out every mania and I do a motif. I don't know, but... I loved it. I wanted to start it. I thought it would be a fun mania thing, both because it's crazy in and of itself to do a sampler that big on 56 count. And there's tons of things you can do one a day on. And so I thought it'd be the perfect mania project. So that's my tentative plan. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Um, we'll see where it goes. Um, also, also in April, I plan on just catching up on a lot of whips. So I worked on a ton in March, almost every single, well, I probably would have touched every single one of my whips in March. So in April, instead, I just want to pick a few, make some really good progress on them, get that border of consider the lilies done, and then um, get ready for mania. So I'm excited about all that. So that is most of, yeah, that's all my haul this week. So let me tell you what I have my eye on. Um, I've been watching Nicola Parks from Hands Across the Sea, um, floss too. I mean, I've been watching her since I started, but um, I've been watching her really closely lately because I ordered my first Hands Across the Sea chart and kit, and I'll show you that when it comes in, probably next week actually, in my next week's video. But I have my eye on two more small ones. I like that Nicola is doing this small sampler wall, and depending on how this 56 count and high, you know, those sort of higher counts work out for me, I might do something the same. So the first thing I saw is where flowers bloom. I also saw that Elizabeth, Liz from Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch is um, going to do the where flowers can bloom. And so that kind of inspired me as well. And then the other one is the red sampler that Nicola showed in her floss tube today or her most recent one, Emily Ann Foster. Um, that one, I think that one would be a good one for, and if I want to just try the silks on that one, it's just one silk, I think. Um, so it'd be a really good one. So that I have my eye, I'm really leaning towards the hands across the sea samplers these days. And so maybe I'll order some of those and work on those in April and May. We'll see. Giveaway last week, I went through all of my cottages of the month that I mentioned, um, that I stitched last year with happy little stitch shop. Um, so in honor of that, I got excited about these again. So here is the January cottage of the month. Um, I went to a random comment picker and Amy Mathis, I hope I'm saying your last name 
right, but I'll flash your comment here so you can read your name, you are the winner. So if you go to the notes, just show notes below, um, you'll see my email address. Just send me an email of where you would like this shipped and I will get this out to you and I hope you enjoy it. All right, so um, my next giveaway will actually be, um, it won't be today, I'm gonna do a giveaway at 500 su subscribers. So I think I'm at like 385 subscribers. And so I thought just like a fun milestone would be to do a giveaway at 500 subscribers. And I'm gonna tie it to um, a stitch along that I'm going to partic be participating in. So if you watch Brenda and the Serial Starter, which most of you probably do, and if you don't, you should, they're great. They mentioned that they're going to do a Blackbird Designs stitch along in May. And there's two thing, two Blackbird designs that I've been wanting to start, so I'm going to participate in that. The first one is Oh Joyous Day. So this will be a giveaway when I get to 500 subscribers, which I think, I hope will be around the same time. Um, so that will be my giveaway. I may have a second giveaway with it as well, because 500 subscribers, like that's a huge milestone for me. I never thought anybody <laughs> would watch my floss too, much less, you know, 300 people. So um, anyhow, Get all your friends to subscribe and we'll get up to 500 and if that's next week great i'll give it away next week and then keep moving through my stash of giveaways if um it's in a few weeks that's fine too so this is in honor of that may blackbird design stitch along i also was able to get in the traditional stitches the blackbird design chart um that was specially made for them and it's supposed to be shipping at the end of march so i will probably stitch oh joyous days or at least start oh joyous days and the traditional stitches blackbird design in may as well and so i hope you're able to join the blackbird design stitch along i know there will be more details on brenda and the serial starters um floss tube in the coming weeks and so that's something to look forward to okay okay so that is really all of the stitching that i have for you today thank you so much for joining me i love being able to come here every week and talk about all the stitching that I save up in my head during the week um, so that I can share it with you. Again, I would love to follow you as well on your YouTube and um, Instagram. So put that in the comments. If you have any advice for me about Consider the Lilies, and if you think I'm crazy for 56 count or ideas for approaching such a big project, let me know if you're about to start a Hands Across the Sea um, sampler or if you're an old pro at those you know any tips you have on those and I'll show more about that next week I think because I think my first kit will be in there um, and then like I said when we get to 500 subscribers I'll do a giveaway for the oh joyous day for blackbird design and I'm really excited about that and Amy I will get your giveaway out to you as soon as possible I hope you all have a great week I hope you you get to take some time off um, I know spring break is usually only for students and teachers and those working in school systems, whether that's higher ed or, um, or K-12. Um, but even if you're not one of those people, I hope you're able to take a few days off in March. It's just a great time to restart. It, that also reminds me, I guess we have um, here in Texas the um, time change tonight. And so things just always seem more hopeful for me this time of year with extra daylight. Um, and you know, the beautiful weather that's coming up. So I hope you get to enjoy some of that yourself and I will see you next week. Bye, have a great week.